I want to be the Pirate King, the very best there has ever been. I want to catch them all, all of the pirates. So today we're going to turn more One Piece characters into Pokemon. Well, most of the work Kyle the Omega took over once again, So or the Mega, uh, he made more of these characters some time ago and today we're going to take a look at five more characters that are not Straw Hats, but maybe some of them were very close to being Straw Hats. First of all, let's get into one of the characters that you have seen on the thumbnail already. This is Law. Law is a Psychic and Dark type Pokemon. He has two different abilities. He can choose between Infiltrator or Psychic Search. And then his moves are Chord Change, Trick, Psychic and Snatch. So let's go through all of these things one by one. Psychic and Dark obviously makes sense because of his abilities with the OP Opinomi and just his personality in general. So the typing may, may instantly makes sense to me at least. Then let's go to the abilities. Infiltrator. Infiltrator is an ability that's in Japanese it goes by the name of slip through and it allows the Pokemon's moves to be unaffected by barrier substitutes or other things. I would say this is a good fit because it makes sense for Law to ignore these sort of defensive mechanisms because his OP Opinomi powers can just bypass all of them. He has all these attacks that can just hit the enemy internally instead of just hitting their outside defenses. So Infiltrator makes a lot of sense for Law. But the second ability is almost the perfect match for Law. Psychic Surge. Once the Law gets thrown into battle, a Psychic Surge appears and turns the ground into Psychic Terrain when the Pokemon enters a battle. The, so the Psychic Terrain created by Psychic Surge has a few different effects. First of all, it makes it so that the Psychic Pokemons or the Psychic type moves get 50% more power. Then we also have that priority moves are not working the same more or basically the affected Pokemon, the Pokemon on the field with the Psychic Surge are immune to priority moves. That includes all kinds of moves as well. Then also things like Nature Power becomes Psychic, Secret Power turns into Confusion, and Camouflage turns the Pokemon into a Psychic type. There are many things happening with Psychic Surge, and it basically is an equivalent of Law using his room. I felt like Psychic Surge is a perfect fit, especially because Law is a Psychic type and it's very useful for his other attacks. Then we come to Core Change. Core Change is a special move that has been there since Sword and Shield. The description says, with its mysterious power, the user swaps the effects on either side of the field. I've never heard of that move before seeing this law card here, and it actually is a very fitting thing. It's basically Law's Shumbles, because if an enemy sets up Reflect, Tailwind, or anything else like Entry Hazards, Law can just use Court Change, or Shambles, to take these things away from the enemy's side and bring it over to his side. So the entry hazards are now a problem for the enemy, or the Tailwind is now boosting the speed of his team. So Core Change is insanely good of a thing for Law, and in general Law feels more like a setup character in this scenario here, but that's also something another character has suffered from, or not really suffered, it's a good thing. Some Pokemon need to be setups. Our next move is Trick. The description says the user catches the target off guard and swaps the target's held items with its own. It's a very niche thing, but it can be very optimized and yet. So technically, if let's say Law is a user of the choice scarf, which makes him more speedy, he can then use Trick to give the enemy the choice scarf, make them more speedy and lock them into one attack. So it's very niche in a situation. It can also backfire tremendously, but combined with another move that Law has, Trick is a very good thing to have. Then our next move is the obvious Psychic. Law is a Psychic type Pokemon and he has to have a strong Psychic move. Combined with the Psychic Surge from his ability, Psychic is going to be one hell of an attack and Law is going to be a big damage dealer as well. While the other move Snatch we have here as the fourth move isn't that big. Snatch is a very specific move and it's even more niche than Trick. Maybe I'm just not that deep into Pokemon, but if the description says the user steals the effects of any attempt to use a healing or stat changing move, I every other time if the enemy isn't using something like Dragon Dance, Sword Dance or other things to increase its stats or just recover to heal itself, 
this attack does nothing. So in general, Snatch is not something I would run on my lower Pokemon, but it's still, depending on the situation, it can be useful. Instead of that, I would probably like to run this move on Law. These are two moves that Kyle didn't put on Law, but I think they are also very good fits for him. Let's say Trick Room. He already has Trick, so why not Trick Room? Together with the trick, giving the enemy a choice scar thing, trick room is a perfect scenario. Because the user creates a bizarre area in which the slower Pokemon gets to move first. So if you make the enemy faster with the choice scarf, you're suddenly slower, but because of the trick room, you're still faster. So that means Law is a even even though Law might move slower than other characters, he can still move first. That is I don't know how it would really translate to the law we get from One Piece itself, but for a Pokemon scenario, I feel like this would be a very good thing for law, especially because he's known to be very strategic and just makes every usage of every other thing here. So a trick room it is. And last but not least, I have a move that is just something we talk about every single time because this is the one thing Lost Devil Fruit apparently has come down to. And it's a move called Revival Blessing from Scarlet and Violet. Description for this move says, The user bestows a loving blessing, reviving a party Pokemon that has fainted and restoring half the Pokemon's max HP. I will take this as the immortality surgery from Law's ability that we always talk about that he might use it on Luffy or get forced to use it on Doflamingo or maybe Blackbeard. All these scenarios are happening in the fan groups and just theories and other things. And I think despite the niche use, like many of his other moves, this is a very good thing for Law. And Law seems more like a support character that can also pull out a lot of damage just with his one psychic attack. Honestly, Law could have tens or twenty more attack variations. Slide works well with his tucked ability or his other things. Everything is there is for Law. He can have a lot more abilities. I mean, there's also Gamma Knives, so he could have some sort of electric attack as well. But these are the six moves I chose for Law for now. But if you think there are any other moves for Law or any of the other upcoming characters, please make sure to tell me in the comments what you think would be a good attack for these Pokemon One Piece characters. Then we come to the second character, Marco, the first commander of the Whitebeard Pirates, or technically now the captain, or the Whitebeard Pirates don't even exist anymore, he's still on a high position in the world. Marco is a fire flying character, that's obviously, there's nothing to say about that. You could argue about a fairy, maybe a phoenix would be a fairy Pokemon, but if we go with phoenix, he very much could be like Ho-Oh and fire flying is that in a nutshell. His abilities are either a healer or a regenerator, and his moves are Brave Bird, Mystical Fire, Sacred Fire, Recover, and a few other ones that I chose for later. Now, let's go through the abilities. Healer. This is something I also gave, I think, Chopper in the last video, but Healer obviously plays on his healing abilities and him being a doctor. Healer is an ability where he sometimes cures the status condition of the Pokemon's allies. There's not much to say about that, it's just his Phoenix Flames being there to heal. The same with the Phoenix Flames can be said for his other ability called Regenerator. Instead of healing other people, Regenerator is more of a self-heal. So every time the Pokemon is withdrawn from battle, so when, whenever Marco has a small time of recoverage and everything, he recovers more HP compared to other people. In Pokemon, normally Pokemon in battle don't really recover HP, so he would be the only one of the ability. But in One Piece, you can just say he has a bigger recovery power compared to other people. So Marco could either be a supportive character or some very tanky thing here. With his stat distribution, I would say he probably has more in his physical attack and... Actually, it's hard to say if Marco would be a physical attacker or a special attacker, if he would be a speedster or maybe he's just some tanky kind of character. Marco could be in... Marco could go in a few different directions here. But let's go through his attacks now. First of all is Brave Birds. The user tucks his wings in and charges at a low altitude. This also damages the user quite a lot. It's a self-sacrificing move that makes sense. We actually saw Marco technically use this move on Onigashima because he just did, like does this dive attack on King and Queen, I think. And that's just Brave Bird. It's a very strong flying type attack, but it also hurts the user, as it said before. And 
it very it fits Marco, and if he can just get switched out to recover the HP he got from the recoil, I think it's a good thing. It is a physical attack, so it doesn't work well together with some of the other things we're going to see right now. Mystical Fire. Mystical Fire is the signature move of Delphox, actually, and it's a special attack, so that makes me question if Marco is a special or a physical attacker. Maybe he's a hybrid, similar to how Lucario can exactly work. Mystical Fire is an attack where the user breathes a special hot fire. You can say it's like a Obviously, he's a mythical Zoan, so instead of mystical fire, you can maybe call it mythical fire. And it says Phoenix Flames. This is an offensive attack that can also lower the special attack of the enemy. So maybe the Phoenix Flames can somehow burn longer and maybe discourage the enemy from doing his attack. So it's just Marco being more in a supportive position. He's still a very strong fighter, but I feel like Marco is more of a supporter. So him having Sacred Fire is just, Sacred Fire will probably be his most powerful attack. And as the description says, the target is raised with a mystical fire of great intensity. This may also leave the target with a burn. So Marco cannot only decrease the attacking power of the enemy, but also leave them with a significant burn. And just having these burns obviously means that the enemies are going to get hurt over time unless they might be immune to fire, as obviously there are many One Piece characters resistant to flames, but Marco needs some sort of big special moves. So obviously I think Kyle did that because Sacred Fire was the obvious choice here. Same with Recover. Recover is a move where somebody just recovers half of their HP, so just having a Phoenix being able to recover the HP is an obvious choice. There's not much to say there, so let's go to the other two moves that I thought could also fit in there and are more on the physical side if you want to play Marco as a physical character. First of all, this one isn't actually the strongest flying attack type attack, especially because we already have an attack like Brave Bird. But Wing Attack is an obvious choice for Marco. He has wings. You can give him some sort of ability that his moves are double type. It's an attack from Holucha that's both flying and fighting type. So maybe Marco has some sort of ability that all his flying type attacks are also fire type attacks, which could him be give him more coverage and just make sure that he can actually hit people with at least neutral damage so wing attack might not be the best flying type move but it's something very fitting for marco same with the move fly it's an hm so marco can be used as your flying taxi but it's obviously also very strong because the user is not there for one turn so he dodges damage while that's going on the downside is that the enemy might be able to prepare themselves to dodge the attack or switch out into somebody who resists it. But Fly is a good choice in many scenarios and it has helped me a lot of times in at least battles against NPCs. Against other humans this one might be not as useful but Marco still has a lot of different moves he can learn. Obviously Flamethrower is also an option. But that's all for Marco, let's get into the third character. Our well so loved basically self-insert character, all of us are Bartolomeo. Bartolomeo is a pure psychic type. You could argue that he maybe is psychic fighting, but psychic is also a very good fit. And if you can already look at the attacks and abilities, he's very much set up to only be a supporter. Which kind of makes sense, but in the other end I also thought he needs to have at least some attacks, because all of these moves, let's get to them, uh, protect, light screen, reflect, and white guard. None of them are actually attacking moves. You could argue that he maybe has things like counter as well, because we saw him get attacked by Hack once in Dressrosa, and Hack getting hit by the barrier actually hurt Hack himself because the damage got like redirected to himself, which means counter or maybe something else like scan could work for Bartolomeo, but just all these things like build up on his defensive abilities are an obvious fit, and his abilities being Wonder Guard or Dauntless Shield also make a lot of sense. Dauntless Shield is not as good as Wonder Guard, but it depends on the situation I guess. So Wonder Guard. If you have Wonder Guard, that's the one ability that's only used by Shedinja. And it makes sense because Shininja only has 1 HP. I don't think that Bartolomeo only has 1 HP. But if he has more and also Wonder Guard, that's actually really, really strong. Because Wonder Guard is an ability that just lets you only be hurt by super effective moves. So that means Bartolomeo, if he's a pure psychic type, he can get only hurt by bug, ghost, and dark type attacks. 
It's only three different types of attacks, which makes him a, a insane tank and especially if the enemies are not predicting him to have wonder guard it's going to be a big surprise on the other side dauntless shield is just him increasing his defense stat which is not always play on his uh, like barrier abilities but it's not as impressive as wonder guard but if you don't want bartolomeo to be as overpowered maybe dauntless shield is a better option maybe wonder guard is even banned in competitive play but let's get to his attacks first of all is protect Protect is a move that you see in almost every competitive battle because it's such an important move. It allows you to block one attack from an enemy with 100% guarantee. It can give you some time to maybe stall out the enemy if you combine it with some sort of toxic play or burn play from Marco or something else. So Protect is actually the perfect fit on Bartolomeo and every, actually everything Kyle did here for Bartolomeo is a perfect fit and I'm just I just like Bartolomeo. Same for both attacks called Light Screen and Reflect. They are basically one and the same, just for different scenarios. Reflect reduces the damage from physical attacks, while Light Screen reduces the damage from special attacks. So, both of those make sense, it's just a lot of barrier plays, same with the attacking move White Guard. White Guard is actually a move that I never really understood until I read the description. So, the user and its allies are protected from wide ranging attacks for one turn. So basically, if I understand this correctly, so if I understand it correctly, White Guard is basically protect, but in a double battle for both of your teammates, if there is like a spread move, like maybe Earthquake or Surf. So in this case, both of your Pokemon are getting actually protected from that attack. So why am I not seeing White Guard as often? It sounds really, really strong, but I'm not sure why it's not as good as protect. Is it maybe niche or what is the difference here that I'm not getting? But let's go to the other attacks that I gave Bartolomeo that also makes sense for him. The first move that I chose was Shelter. The user makes its skin as hard as an iron shield, sharply boosting its defense stats. So instead of maybe protecting other people with reflect or light screen, Shelter is more of a move where Bartolomeo increases his own defense. Technically, everybody could use Shelter, and Shelter is very much like Armament Haki, but it also is fitting to have as a barrier move, and sharply increasing your defense. If that isn't something Bartolomeo does, then you can actually call me Aqua instead of Pyro. And the same goes for attacks like Barrier or Iron Defense. But Barrier in itself, the name is perfect because he has a Barrier Barrier no me, and it's also a Psychic type attack, and he's a Psychic Pokemon, so... Barrier also does the same of sharply increasing your defense, same for iron defense. It's just all of these moves work because they are defense increasing moves. But I think from shelter, barrier and iron defense, barrier is the perfect fit. Then we come to one thing where Bartolomeo would actually have an attacking move for once. As I said, counter would make perfect sense for his barriers. But I also think if you have a Pokemon that uses high defense stats and everything, you, can, you have to have the move Body Press on that Pokemon. Body Press is an attack from Fighting type. That's also why I thought maybe Bartolomeo is Psychic Fighting. And that Body Press attack actually uses the defense stats instead of the attack stats to calculate damage which makes Bartolomeo an, at an attacker that relies completely on his defense and it just fits his character and with a barrier punch I can see how this somehow fits together and that's why I think body press would be the signature move from Bartolomeo and just rename it into barrier punch or barrier, barrier pistol. Talking about Barrier Pistol, there is also one move I gave Bartolomeo because I knew that he is very much inspired by Luffy. And taking a step back and looking at Luffy in the last video, Luffy's signature move basically was Hammer Arm. So I think Bartolomeo having the same move called Hammer Arm would make a lot of sense just like seeing Barto giving Luffy some sort of signal that he's looking up to him. The same could be said for Fire Punch or Extreme Speed, but I feel like Hammer Arm is a much better fit than those two attacks. And that's why I like Bartolomeo. He can have so many different things from being a defensive to an offensive character. He is one of my favorite One Piece characters and I would love to see more of him. I still wonder what Shanks did with him after he actually burnt down his flame in one of the stories. Now, here's the fourth character. 
our first woman of the day. It's Carrot. Well, unless you count Law as a woman, because he was technically for a short time, he was a woman. But let's not talk about that. That's a topic for another day, maybe. Carrot is a normal electric type. And this very, very hyper energetic body also has two abilities that very much fit into that spectrum. It's Speed Boost and Beast Boost. Beast Boost would technically also work like Speed Boost or maybe like an attacking move. You can think like Beast Boost is more of a thing like the Sulong form because he, she can turn into this sort of moon monster. And Speed Boost is just an ability that increases her speed gradually every turn by one stage. While Beast Boost is something that only increases her most proficient stat each time she knocks out an enemy. So, just thinking that the Beast Boost would also be for speed, I feel like Speed Boost is the obvious better choice. But maybe there is something I'm missing for Beast Boost, but otherwise I would always play Speed Boost on Carrots. And just repeat these last few sections and count how many times I said Boost. Now let's get into the moves. First we have Moonlight. Moonlight is a move that makes Moon come out and heal the user. While it isn't really something Carrot can do, the obvious connection between the Moon and Minx is just there, so if we give her some sort of custom ability bet besides Speed Boost and Beast Boost, I don't know, it would be fun to see an ability where there's some sort of weather condition where the Moon is out and then the Pokemon transforms into a different type of Pokemon, giving her the Sulong abilities with a stat change and everything. If that's something you can do with Moonlight, it would be very cool. But if that's not happening, it's still a neat thing to recover half your HP in some stages. So giving Carrot Moonlight is nice, but it's not. It's just more of a thematic thing connected to the Minx instead of just Carrot. Then we have Bounce, the obvious choice because she is a bunny. Bounce is similar to Fly we had on Marco, that she bounces up for one turn and then drops down on the next turn to deal damage to the enemy. But there's also a chance that she paralyzes the enemy, which it obviously makes it better than Fly. But I think Fly actually doesn't have a chance to miss, while Bounce has a chance to miss. I might be wrong on that, maybe it's just that Bounce has a worse chance to hit, but I think Bounce has some sort of downside compared to Fly. And it's also a flying type move. I feel like bounce would make more sense if it's a normal type move of like the normal Pokemon bouncing, but it's flying apparently. Then we have a move called high jump kick. Similar to bounce, Carrot would jump up to a very fast place and then using her knee to just kick down on the enemy. But if she misses, she takes a lot of damage instead. So it's a double edged sword, but it's fitting for Carrot who is still a bit maybe inexperienced in battle and just wanting to go all out but having the chance to hurt herself. I feel like it's a very good fit for her personality and I like the choice of high jump kick. Maybe later down the line she can get a fighting move that doesn't hurt herself. She could also have something like close combat but that's Kara's choice. I'm not going to tell her what to do. Same with the move Spark. Spark is an electric type move that is a play on the Ming's ability to use Electro. It's the racial ability where they can just generate electric powers from their paws and body. It's interesting that these animals can do that. And I wonder if actually Chopper has a similar ability because he is very close to a Mink if you think about it. Spark is a not so strong electric attack because the user just does an electrical charge tackle at the enemy and also has a chance of paralyzing. So Carrot has a lot of different chances of paralyzing the enemy, making them slower and giving her another chance to it. Not like there's no double attacking in Pokemon. Maybe if you play Legends Arceus. So Carrot has chance of multi attacks if you think about it with the whole being a very speedy character and slowing down the enemy. But I just feel like there are better fits than Spark. And I'm actually going to tell you them in the next segment here. Electro Ball is my best fit scenario for an electric attack for carrots. The user hurls an electric orb at the target. The faster the user is than the target, the greater the move's power. With carrots' whole theme being a very speedy bunny, it's just a perfect attack for half to her. I think electric ball would be carrots' signature move, and with her getting faster and faster every turn, maybe even being a choice scarfed Electro Ball user, I feel like she could deal a lot of damage with that attack. 
Then we also have an attack that I'm not sure if I would give it to her. It's Thunder Cage, the signature move from Reggie Ilecki. But I don't really am a fan of that attack it's because it requires Carrot to use tactics and Carrot is not the kind of girl who uses tactics in my opinion. She's not stupid but she's more of a head on fighter. And last but not least the attack I have for her is Extreme Speed. Doesn't even need to be explained, Carrot is a fast bunny so Extreme Speed is right there on the mark. And yes, all these things are very much themed around her electric abilities or just her attacks in general. Because Electrical Luna is literally a thing where she charges up a ball of electricity and throws it at the enemy. It's just Electro Ball. And Moon Rabbit is very similar to High Jump Kick and maybe it's Comet Rabbit. There are many different attacks of Carrot that are a lot alike compared to these Pokemon moves. So I feel like Carrot is... The best character we had so far in this video, and I very much like what Kyle did that. You can really check Kyle out on TikTok, his ad is always down there in the pictures from the characters. He does a lot of good short videos about these sort of characters, not only One Piece but also other stories. I just like watching them and maybe there's a chance of us doing something together in the future if we ever get back to that. And last but not least, the other character from the thumbnail, Yamato Human Fog. The type for Yamato in this case is Steel and Fighting. You might think, why not Ice? But there is a thing for that that you might see in another video. The two abilities Yamato can choose from are Defiant and Power Construct. Her moves are Super Power, Brutal Swing, Takedown and Bolt Strike. A lot of fitting attacks here. And then I also have some of my own choices that I think are also a very fitting for Yamato's character and fighting style. But let's get to her abilities first. Defiant, which I think is the better ability for Yamato, is something where if a stat from you get lowered, your attack stat gets boosted sharply. And Yamato is very defiant. I mean, she obviously despises what her father is doing, and she wants to be somebody who is actually out there to kill her father. Yamato is a very defiant daughter. So... I think it's very fitting and just her being a physical attacker, I think Defiant is the best fit ability. But if you want a bit something more special, Power Construct is something I would have never thought of for Yamato. It's the ability that Zygarde has and let's read it here. Cells gather to aid the Pokemon when its HP drops to half or less, causing it to change into, into its completed form. Now, what does this thing do for Yamato? If you could say that maybe Yamato has this ability where if she is at half HP, she then turns into her hybrid form, being turned into an entirely different Pokemon. But it's a bit different if you think about it for Zygarde, because here's a picture of Zygarde in its full form, and just see it like that. It's an entirely new creature. You could say it's similar to how there's a hybrid form and other thing, but normally a hybrid form doesn't heal you. But it's an interesting thing that maybe could change up the dynamic of the battle in Pokemon. If you have Yamato as a fighting steel type Pokemon and later down the line she changes into her hybrid form which is obviously two different types. I feel like it could very much change the flow of the battle and maybe mess up whatever the enemy had planned. Especially if your enemy doesn't know if that's Yamato using the Defiant or Power Construct ability. Because if you only prepare for steel fighting Yamato, you might be messed up if she changes in her, into her other form. But let's get into her attacks for now. First of all, we have Super Power. There's no explanation for that, Yamato is just really really strong and Super Power is a very good fit. Super Power decreases the user's attack and defense stat, but sadly it doesn't like directly connect with our ability called Defiant, which would increase her attack once again. So, sadly speaking, it still decreases her power, but if there are other things decreasing her stats, she's still in plus one at least. But super power, strong move, very fitting for Yamato. Let's get to the next one. We have Brutal Swing. Yamato, despite her not liking it, she is still the daughter of Kaido. And Kaido uses a Kanaba, which he swings at a very fast rate and he's very brutal with it. So Brutal Swing, very fitting. Yamato having the ability of huge power would also be fitting for her. Huge power would also be something you can see on Big Mom or Kaido. Just in general, huge power is something you can see on 
a lot of different One Piece characters. Just think about Garb, Whitebeard, even Luffy or Zoro. All of these people with huge power would make a lot of sense. Now, the next attack is called Takedown. A move that we all learned and probably lost a few encounters to in Pokemon Nuzlocke because Takedown is a recoil move and sometimes the Pokemon just die using it. Yamato having a recoil move makes sense, it's fitting for a character to sacrifice her if necessary. So I think Takedown is the choice for Yamato but it's not the best choice. I would much rather use Bolt Strike which is an electric attack. Maybe it's a play on Yamato having Conqueror's Haki and then there being these sparks flying from Conqueror's Haki. It's an incredibly powerful electric type attack that also has a chance of paralyzing the enemy. But if that is used to finish the enemy they're for sure getting burned and sizzled by these electric powers. And last but not least, the last move I gave Yamato is something I gave another character as well. Gigaton Hammer, the signature move from the fairy steel Pokemon Tinkaton. It's, I think I actually gave Yamato a Tinkaton when I made the video about what if the One Piece characters had Pokemon. So it's an obvious choice for me that she would also have that attack. It's a 160 base power steel type move that always hits. The only downside is that you can move it twice in a row, but you have so many other strong options that that isn't really a downside. Maybe if it gets blocked by Protect from Bartholomeo or something like that, but it's still a really strong move. And if you put her step, because she's a steel type Pokemon, on top of Gigaton Hammer, that's already an incredible, that's a 240 power move. It's insane. That's just insane. Together with her attack increases from the stat stuff, maybe if there's a Pokemon with Intimidate or something, this Gigaton Hammer is actually like a Teraton Hammer in her hands. But Yamato is a monster. Are there any other monsters you would like to be see turned into Pokemon? You can also tell me that in the comments down below. For today, I would probably say that's all from those One Piece characters, but next time we're going to take a look it's not next week, but in the future we're going to take a look at 5 other characters. So look forward to that, and if you don't want to miss that video, why don't you consider clicking on that subscribe button. But that's all from me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro out. Bye!